Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this wonderful Tuesday, 10 10, 2023, October 10th, 2023, about 1223 p.m. Some lucky numbers there, maybe. Better play the Powerball. Nobody hit it. Getting up to almost $2 billion. Goodness, it's a lot of money. All right, latest activity shows a 1.5 earthquake into the area of Southern California. We did see some larger scale movement overnight, including some activity down here in the Argentina area. Well, underneath Argentina, 247 kilometer deep 6.0. Uh, this activity occurs or uh, occurred following some deeper activity yesterday. I kind of said to keep an eye on this region, and sure enough, uh, enough strain built up here overnight to uh, produce this uh, larger quake uh, a little bit more shallower the six pointer was a little bit more shallower than the uh, deeper quake that we've seen here yesterday afternoon this one here was uh, 500 and almost 540 kilometers deep here uh, the six pointer still pretty deep so we'll continue to watch this area maybe for some larger scale activity Remember, all that strain's got to go somewhere, um, and that's where it goes, upstream, along the subduction zone area. So keep an eye on the South America region for some potential larger scale activity following that movement this morning. Uh, down in Southern California, getting a handful of earthquakes here. Uh, let's see what we got for the 2.5 and above map. Did have a, a 2.6 here near the desert center area. This is off of the... I'm not for sure which plate boundary that's on. Let's see, but it's definitely, or a fault system that's on, but that's definitely well off the plate boundary into the North American side uh, with a 2.6, 5.3 kilometers deep. Now it looks like we're seeing a little bit of activity here uh, outside the uh, Indio region. A couple smaller earthquakes, 2.4 and a 1.1. That is just off of the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary here. This area did see a little bit of swarming here over the past few weeks. Uh, looks like that may be coming back into play. Continue to keep an eye on that area. Uh, also some movement up here um, near the Colton area, 1.1. Rest of the region here, some uh, small microquake activity. And around the Bay Area, seeing a handful of smaller quakes as well. The latest one, a 2.3 near the uh, San Leandro area. That's on the uh, Calaveras, or Hayward Fault, excuse me. Further up north into Northern California, a handful of spotty earthquakes as well. Nothing major going on. Uh, and that includes areas around the Pacific Northwest. Still seeing a little bit of smaller earthquake activity across the Mount St. Helens region. Uh, but aside from that, uh, we've got one earthquake here in the Yellowstone region. That's going to be a 3.2 uh, eastern side. I'm just hearing some sirens outside. Uh, 3.2 eastern areas of Yellowstone National Park. Let's see what we got over there real quick. Kind of curious. We'll key up the uh, Yellowstone seismographs. Hopefully these are working. Uh, I just jinx it. It doesn't look like they are. For some reason there's been uh, some uh, lack of data being reported out here uh, for the Yellowstone area. Let me go back here to the... Um, let's see, where are we? Got to find the University of Utah right here for the latest uh, data, but even here it was not working. So stand by for a second. Oh goodness, there we go. So it's going to be one of these seismograph stations over here. The latest area, uh, yeah, even here these are not working. So it looks as though this is a network-wide issue as far as the Yellowstone seismograph stations go so we can't go back and look see how big that quake was we do have uh, a live seismograph station here lake yellowstone I'm not for sure if anyone's seen that earthquake earlier this morning on that graph but uh more than likely they probably seen it show up pretty nicely with that 3.2 so we'll have to come back and look and see if they fix these graphs a little later on but for now just going to take their word for it that a 3.2 is it in the area of Silvergate, Montana, well outside of Yellowstone Lake. Uh, the rest of the region here, uh, a lot of this is from yesterday here. Movement across the oil fields, certain areas of Texas getting hit pretty good 
over the past couple days, increasing strain out here against the North American continent. Uh, today, a little bit different, not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, looks like 2.8 in this swarm that kicked up uh, mostly from yesterday there. Uh, around the Caribbean plate, got um, a couple earthquakes there around the Puerto Rico area. Nothing major going on, no huge swarms. A little bit of activity here from yesterday in the uh, Middle America Trench, but that has since calmed down, it looks like. The majority of the activity overnight and this morning so far has been down in the South America region with that six-pointer. Also, some adjustment going on up here across the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. Northern edge, uh, for the most part, it looks like. We did see three earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Two of those from yesterday, one early this morning, it looks like, 4.4. 74 kilometers deep. Notice the swarm has come to a halt. Um, just rather odd, right? That was a lot of earthquake activity that we've seen here. Uh, I wonder if it's been past seven days or so. Uh, let's see, I believe it has. We'll pull up the 30 days, 4.5 and above. And you can see just how many earthquakes have struck most of these here within the last 10 days or so around the Izu Trench. Uh, quite the swarm, quite a bit of energy out there. Uh, in this region and uh, we did see some sixes out there in that area uh, largest magnitude 6.1 6.1 and a 6.0 all within the swarming area which magically has completely stopped um, just a little odd to see that with really no main quake out here uh, but uh, you know who knows we've seen a little quiet spell before and then the swarm kicked back up so we'll continue to watch this area. I just find it rather strange. Uh, one little earthquake out here in the northern Mariana Islands. It's a 4.9. Uh, but aside from that, things are still relatively quiet out here across the areas of the western Pacific for now. And one earthquake, 5.7. Shallow earthquake up here around Tonga. Uh, north of Tonga, but into the uh, area of the Tonga Trench. Uh, about uh, 25 kilometers deep. That was just after midnight. So, realistically speaking out here, it's been uh, pretty quiet here so far this morning. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. Let me bring this back down the last 24 hours. Not for sure why there's so many quakes on the globe. Um, well, I think there's so many because there's actually quite a bit down here in South America. Quite a few threes and twos stirring up there. The USGS does not report the uh, smaller quakes, only 4.0 uh, uh, and above for this area, I believe. Yeah, 4.0 and above. Uh, smallest one, a 4.2 there from uh, early this morning. But uh, definitely seen some earthquake activity down there, South America. Uh, let's see, Alaska region, seen a handful of earthquakes up there as well. Looks like they had a four-pointer. Let's zoom up there real quick, see what we got. Uh, 4.2 over here on the Gulf of Alaska. Interesting. Um, five kilometers deep. And for the most part, let's see here, let's bring up the newest magnitudes. Handful of smaller quakes up north, Denali area, and also around the Anchorage area. But uh, a slight uptick, I would say, across this area of the plate boundary. We'll continue to watch this though, and see how it plays out. Go from very active to very calm conditions across the western Pacific plate. That's just really weird. All right, uh, Hawaii, notice um, a long, well see where we're at here. Still seeing a little bit of swarming earlier this morning, it looks like, uh, across this area of the Kilauea Volcano, the crater area up here, Lava Lake. Uh, this swarm has been uh, fluctuating along with the activity there across the Izu Trench, but it looks like the Hawaii area is continuing that swarming area, uh, swarming activity for now. Most of these earthquakes down there, uh, almost three kilometers deep, so it could be a sign that, uh, Things are really charging up down there. Let me see what we got for the tilt meter. And according to the USGS here, tilt meter across the Kilauea Volcano Summit area is about the highest it's been uh, in over five years. So something's building out here across this area. It looks like this one's offline. They did mention that uh, they, they were having some issues with it. And of course, wouldn't you know, well, there we go. Now we got it working. Let's see, past two days, Here's that little peak up here. It has since leveled out, it looks like, uh, overnight and this morning so far. 
but the long-term trend still shows since the eruption uh, back there around 9, 10 or so lasted for a few days and then it halted around the 14th. Since the uh, pause there in the eruption, we still have noticed a uh, increasing trend there of tilt inflation. So right now, you know, just a little bit of silence, so to speak, a little bit of calmer conditions there across Kilauea Volcano, but I don't think that's going to last long. We'll continue to watch that though. Uh, web cameras out there still shows quite a bit of um, volcanic gases and whatnot uh, seeping up through some of the cracks out there around Lava Lake. You can see some of those uh, gases there coming up. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here across the worldwide view. Not a whole lot going on out here across the Mediterranean, at least according to the USGS model and uh, EMSC as well. Although we do have 4.0 down in the Morocco area. Aside from that, things look generally quiet though, for the most part in this region. Couple threes out here around the Azores region of the Atlantic. But aside from that, things very quiet across the Atlantic Ocean for now. Space weather activity, see what we have stirring up out here. It looks like we did see a uh, another M flare overnight, but an M 2.0 or so that is coming uh, 2.3 to be exact. That's coming from 3451, and that's going to be that far side sunspot now on the western limb of the sun. Beautiful image of some flaring. This area had many days while it was facing us to uh, grow and produce some flares, but it decided to wait until it got over here across the western limb. This is the area right here. Uh, for it to be active. find it rather strange. Uh, so that's continuing to uh, advance across the western limb of the sun. We'll be out of sight, out of mind in the coming hours. Um, and we're left with uh, this sunspot down here. This still looks fairly complex. It looks like it may be gaining a little bit of steam. We'll watch that though for some, uh, some activity, potentially. Uh, overall threat, 95% chance for C-flare, M-flare at 35, X-flare around 5% chance. And looking out here real quick on the eastern limb that's coming our way, these sunspots are going to be uh, venturing towards the earth-facing side of the sun. Um, hard to tell. A couple of different regions way out there, but uh, I don't have a good view of the uh, complexity of the magnetic structure. We'll check that out a little bit later tonight. There's a corona hole that's been facing us somewhat. Um, number 58, it is now off, heading off towards the western uh, areas of the sun. Doesn't look like they're uh, putting anything in the forecast for now as far as any elevated uh, solar weather uptick from that corona hole, at least for now. We'll check back on this again later on tonight and see if anything gets updated or not. Uh, let's see here. What was this? Looks like there was a CME on the far side of the sun. Um, earlier today, massive, very massive, uh, CME out there. Could see that, uh, huge area, but, uh, again, that's not facing the earth. That's, uh, definitely away from us. All right, uh, let's see what we got for Storm Prediction Center here today. Slight chance of uh, thunderstorms. That's about it. No severe weather threat, at least in the categories here. Less than 5% for wind and hail. Less than 2% for tornadoes. And that's just going to be uh, the deal today and tomorrow. It looks like day three, potentially, we could have a slight risk for some severe weather across eastern areas of Kansas and the beautiful state of Nebraska. As far as the uh, numerical models go, I do like to check this out and uh, see if we got any major weather pattern changes coming up. And uh, right now, here's the cooler temperatures providing us quite the comfortable conditions out here in California. I got about 70 degrees here right now where I'm at uh, around Chico. And uh, those temperatures are going to last through, I think, the majority of the week. Uh, looks like they're and even on the weekend. We do have another trough building up here across the West Coast. Uh, before high pressure wants to build back in. And um, I guess we'll kind of see how that plays out. It's a ways in the future here. I'm hoping that high will just get out of here. I'm not interested in hot temperatures anymore this year. I am done with it. 
I think the majority of us are. I'm ready for some colder temperatures. And uh, all right, well, let's see what else we got here. I think that's about it, folks. I'm going to jump off here and um, enjoy the rest of my Tuesday. Hope everyone else is doing the same. Got some crazy conditions going on in the grand view of the world far as, uh, you know, political stuff goes. A little scary on some stuff, but we won't... We won't jump into that. Try not to discuss the uh, politics out here too much on this channel or conflicts. But it's uh, definitely worth watching. I've been watching that quite a bit this morning. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe. We will catch you guys back here later tonight. Take care.